you know, all of that kind of stuff. Like, was it as, as physical and chippy as you expected it to be, as it was the year before? Was it less? How, how was it for you? Um, you know, up front, going in every game, is going to be a battle. And, uh, you know, we knew that their D-line was, uh, at this point in the year, the strength of their defense. So, you know, we did our best to game plan them up. And uh, we, I, I felt like we were the aggressors uh, on the line of scrimmage. And uh, I stayed that way the whole game. And it's indicative of a score. To have this Indiana game sandwiched in between two rivalry games, basically, I mean, how much of a challenge is it to not look past this week and look ahead or have like a win hangover from the previous week? I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's difficult to look past this week at all. Um, Indiana was uh, ranked in the AP poll last week. Um, they were, I looked in the middle of the game and uh, they were down by three to Penn State with like nine minutes to go. And, uh, I mean, they're hanging in there with Penn State. They're a good offense, uh, kind of similar to what we do. Um, it'll be good to see how they, uh, it'll be fun to see how they match up with our defense, but you definitely can't look past this Indiana team. Uh, last few times we've been to Bloomington, they've gone to overtime. Um, there's just something, something about them that uh, they kind of always get the best of us. I know last year, uh, at uh, right before halftime, they were, they were beating us. And, uh, they kind of got away with a little kick of the ball before we spotted to uh, stop the clock, but um, yeah, definitely this is a team you can look past. They got good, solid players uh, up and down their defense, so looking forward to playing them. Is there a lot of like emphasis with you guys as a group, especially for the upperclassmen, that these games have gone into overtime in recent years there? Yeah, um, yeah, we, we talked about it like right after the Michigan State game. Um, it kind of is a 24-hour period after the game that you get to celebrate it, but um, you know, moving forward, like you said, been there past two times we've gone over time I was at both of those games and uh, every time they come here it always uh, seems to be tightly contested and it always comes down to fourth quarter where uh, for the past four years we ended up pulling away but um yeah definitely looking forward to getting after them what makes playing in Bloomington so difficult uh that's a tough question I really don't know um you know, throughout my career here, it seems that Indiana has been one of the best 500 teams in the country. Um, don't know why that is. Um, you no, know, they match up really well and they play up to their opponents. And I feel like sometimes they play down to the opponent, but we know that they're going to get their we're, they're, we're going to get their best shot. And they kind of have this um, this momentum carrying them, having a good season. Um, I'm sure going to have a lot of fans come out more than usual. Um, yeah, just. Uh, it's just something uh, I haven't watched too much film about them uh, on them yet, but I know that there's something really special going on over there. What's your reaction when you see the shot that your quarterback took late in that game? Yeah, um, I I didn't see it at the time. Um, I always knew that number 96, um, kind of dirty player, him and his brother. Um, I really don't care too much for them. Um, I made clear that you can go back, watch the film, have a play where, you know, I cleaned up 96, take him like 20 yards up, down the field, or up the field, I don't know. Um, not really a big fan of him. Um, I don't want to really talk trash about him, but I really don't like that guy and don't like how he plays the game of football. That was disgusting what he did, completely unnecessary. Uh, you can tell he's frustrated because he couldn't do anything against me or Jalen all game, so he had a come up with a different way to affect the game and ended up taking himself out. So, yeah, don't have much to say. What's your version of talking trash then? I, I really don't like talking trash. Um, sometimes my emotions do get the best of me towards the end of the game. Um, I kind of just let my game kind of do the talking. Um, you know, number 48 over there, um, he's a good pass rusher. Um, he likes to talk a lot. He did last year, not too much this year. Not uh, again. They couldn't really do much against me and Jalen. Um, that's a credit to our preparation and the kind of game plan that we had going in there. Um, uh, offensive line as a whole held up pretty well, even though we did give up. I think technically four sacks. Um, I don't know how much, how many of those were like technically credited to us. But um, yeah, I usually try to stay away from talking trash and. Uh, 
like I said, just let my game speak for itself, and I think I played really well. So at the end of the day, yeah, you just played as the trash talk for you. There was a moment, the TV caught you on the camera. You and Ben sort of having a good moment. I don't know what you're talking about or what you were thinking about, but or if you even saw that. But no. What, what, describe what it was like at the end of that, near the end of that game, the feeling of accomplishment that you guys had. Yeah. Um, right before we went out, after we, after, uh, we scored that last touchdown, um, Johnny Fall came over to us telling us that uh, even though that Paul Bunyan's historically been a, a locker room trophy that uh, we brought him down on the field. And, um, uh, you know, we were excited to go over there and celebrate him. And um, just his overwhelming sense of accomplishment that I've been here five years and finally broke uh, past even on Michigan State and ended up being three and two against him in my career. And that's exciting. And uh, these sophomores are 2 and 0. Oh, and, um, you know, they have a chance to go undefeated against them, and I'm happy that I was able to do that for them. And uh, yeah, just me and Ben, you know, we're coming down to the, uh, and that was our second the last time, running out and touching the banner. So, you know, just trying to soak up this moment and cherishing it on the sideline, taking in the whole view, because we only got one more of these things, and uh, no one knows how that one's going to go. So. No, we're just really trying to charge everything right now. No, no one thinks that it's been kind of out of your control since the Penn State game. How much do you think you guys are going to explain somebody without any pressure kind of back to loose and maybe that's contributing to some of the, um, just the way that you guys have played, the, yeah. you know, humans since that game? Yeah, um, I don't think anything has technically changed on offense. Um, we, we're doing the same stuff that we've been doing since the Middle Tennessee State game. But I think we just gained confidence and bought into the system 100%. And people are making good decisions and uh, making right reads and you know right blocks and balls are falling in the right place. And when all that happens, you're, you're going to see games with the outcome like this. And it, it just gives you even more confidence going to the next time. I mean, did you feel like, I mean, there, there was pressure, I guess, maybe before the Penn State game, and then, you know, I mean, at that point, it was just like, hey, whatever, we're, we're just going to continue on and yeah, I mean, just play the way that we're going to play. Yeah, there's always pressure when you play here, and especially when you lose an early game in Wisconsin on the road, and people are questioning the identity, identity of the offense and, you know, the team, and uh, we try not to pay attention to that, but sometimes it's just over there looming over uh, above you, and, uh, yeah, I mean, there always is pressure, but you really can't pay attention to it that much. Is it almost unfair, almost unfair to presume at the beginning of the year maybe things would have been great offensively and things would click right away? Is it almost unfair to believe? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it's unfair, but you know, with this full um, kind of like scheme change, not full scheme change, but a lot of different stuff than we did last year, um, I do think it, there was an adjustment period that needed to take place. Um, I think without starting in spring ball, maybe it took a little longer, but you know, that Notre Dame game, you really started to see stuff click for sure. And um, since there, uh, we've had pretty much the same result and outcome in each of the games that we've had since then. And like you said, second half of Penn State, but. Yeah. Thank you.